This is Rogodowski of WeAreChange.org, and I'm joined by Gary Franchi of the Next News Network. In this video, we're going to talk about the rising tensions between the United States and China, troop movements all over the world as intercontinental missiles are flying through L.A., freaking everybody out. We're going to break it down here with you with rational facts and evidence. Now, Gary Franchi, I have known for too long. We, there's only a handful of people that have been involved in this movement as long as me and Gary. Gary has gone through some name changes. He changes the name of his organization just like P. Diddy changes his name. It was Lone Landron. It was Restore the Republic. But now it's the Next News Network and I trust his analysis especially when it comes to all the important world events that have been happening. Now Gary, thank you for coming on and I really want to take just your step, your your analysis of everything that has been happening between China and the United States. What the hell's going on? Well, first of all, China decided they were going to start building up these artificial islands in the Spratly Island chain. And it, 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 at, uh, at the onset, it seemed harmless, but then they started to look more like military bases in the middle of the, of the sea. So the Pentagon got a, got a hair up their um, kazoo and decided that they were going to go over there and investigate. First they sent uh, some spy planes. The Chinese said, hey, get the hell out of our sovereign airspace. But because they created these new island, this new island chain, they have now uh, created their own sovereign zone. It tw extends 12 miles outside of the actual uh, islands themselves. So now, just last week, the United States sent a battle dest a destroyer, a basically a, a guided missile destroyer into the region to go ahead and test the actual boundaries to push the boundaries of the Chinese. So the USS Lassen uh, went into the area, breached the border, the sovereign border of China, and China said, look, you guys are poking us, stop provoking us, uh, we, we, we will use force if necessary. We will protect our islands if we feel that we are under threat. Well, certainly uh, nothing developed in that regard. There was no, no, um, no escalation as far as military, mil militarily. Now, what was interesting was at the very same time, the USS Ronald Reagan was in the Sea of Japan. And at, the, at that moment, the Russians sent up ships, uh, sent up aircraft over the USS Ronald Reagan. When they did that, they flew within one mile and 500 feet of the Reagan. The Reagan scrambled F-18 fighter jets into the, into the air because the Russians were not communicating with the Reagan. At the very same time, you have an, a, a Chinese attack sub shadowing that Reagan as well. So you have the USS Lassen going in and violating China's sovereign, now newly claimed sovereign territory which the, the, the United States does not believe it exists. They, they, don't, they do not recognize this sovereign territory. That's why they're going to go ahead and say, we're going to go do this freedom of navigation waterway test just to, just to piss off the Chinese. And what do the Chinese do? They start shadowing the USS Ronald Reagan in the Sea of Japan. To complicate matters even more, Luke, to complicate matters even more, the, the, uh, the Australians have decided they're going to do the exact same thing, but they're going to take it up one more notch. They're actually going to do live fire military exercises with China. So a couple weeks ago, we put out a false flag alert because we were very concerned about the situation unfolding there. And now the Pentagon has said, look, we're going to continue these provocations. We're going to continue violating the 12 mile zone. And they said they're going to do it twice a quarter, Luke, twice a quarter. So you can guarantee there's going to be at least eight more opportunities for a false flag event to occur or even a real live fire you know, mishap, if you will. Now, obviously, this situation is very important because the Chinese said, do not mess with our international territory. Do not mess with our land. The U.S. said, yeah, we're going to do it, and then we're going to do it again and again. Do you know if Australia is doing that with China in cooperation with each other or against each other? Well, they're doing it in cooperation. You know, just like China came here to Jacksonville, they, they, they docked uh, at, the, uh, at the port there. They had a goodwill call, and they, the Chinese went to Disneyland, and they did all the, 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 the fun stuff that whatever tourists do. Um, so this is, a, this is a direct coordinated event that has been on the schedule with China and Australia. But nonetheless, you know that there's crazies in government that if, if they have an opportunity to press a button, they will. And if somebody yeah. wants to sabotage something at any moment, look at the Gulf of Tonkin. I mean, there are opportunities that will present themselves in the coming weeks. That is very true, and we definitely have to keep an eye out on that. One thing that you have been doing a really good job at is that you've been covering a lot of the troop movements, and you can tell a lot what 
uh, the United States government is thinking when it comes to their foreign policy when they're moving their troops around to potential dangerous areas. What have you been seeing lately, and, and what do you think is happening with the latest troop movements? Well, if you, you, the first thing you need to concentrate on is what NATO is doing and what NATO is saying. Because NATO is like the ugly stepchild that does the bidding of the United States. So you have Jen Stoltenberg, who is the chief of, the, of NATO. And he goes out, and he's been visiting with Obama, and, he's, and he goes out and makes all these stump speeches and says, hey, you know, he's called Russia, he has straight up called Russia the new threat. The, the Russian aggression is the new threat that we must prepare for. So Trident Juncture is the, is the new military exercise that is taking place right now in Europe. 35,000 troops are stationed all throughout Europe doing military exercises, military drills. I mean, we just, we just covered a story uh, just the other week where they were setting up concentration camps uh, in, I think it was in Poland or Spain, and then the Italians are also up there doing all kinds of uh, military exercises over the skies. Um, but here's, here's where it gets interesting. While all this is taking place, NATO has said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to actually consider permanent stationing of troops along the Russian border. Now, this is a direct violation to a treaty between NATO and Russia. Russia says, no, you guys can't do that. That is a violation, and if you do so, we're going to act. So there's, you have to keep your, keep your eyes close to what NATO is doing, what they're saying, and right now they are waving a big stick, 35,000 troops, and, and actually threatening permanent station on the Russian border. Wow. Now, obviously, the tensions and the rhetoric is heating up all over the world, and it looks like what some people are saying, other people are also fear-mongering this, but, but obviously, with all the news that we're breaking down, it seems like we're almost at almost the brink of a World War III scenario between these two major superpowers, whether it's the United States and Russia, along, and then the United States and China. And as we know, China and Russia do have very good relations against each other. It seems like something is coming to a head what do you think is going to happen? Do you think that this could possibly spark World War III? Well, I think that if you look at history, there's always these, these little events that build up to the big war. And I think what we're looking at right now, I mean, I've even said that we're, this is World War III. We're watching it right now unfold before our very eyes. Um, now, World War III is not going to be like, okay, I mean, war, when you think of World War III, you think mushroom clouds, you think ballistic missiles, you think all these crazy things we've seen in Hollywood. But it doesn't have to be like that. You know, when, when history is finally written by, you know, the people in their lofty, you know, professor, you know, offices or whatever, it, they're going to say it started in Syria. They're going to say it started in the South China Sea. They're going to say it started in the Sea of Japan with all these provocations that are building up to that very moment. Now, just because you don't see troops uh, on the battlefields engaging doesn't mean that we're not in World War III. Like I just mentioned, try to juncture 35,000 troops of, 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 like, what, 36 different nations, including the United States, are, are, are actually on the battlefield now. And they're shooting, they're, they have artillery, they have tanks, they have everything that you, that you need to start a war, and they're shooting it at each other, practicing for war. So just because they're not shooting at the Russians yet doesn't mean we're not there. Yeah, and we're already in a proxy war against Russia when it comes to what's happening in Syria. I mean, you have Iran, Iraq, Syria, Russia, China, and Jordan trying to keep Assad in power, fighting against ISIS. Meanwhile, we have Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Israel, and the United States supporting the rebels with troops on the ground. It's already a proxy war. We're going to get into that and a lot more on Gary's channel on the Next News Network. You can click in the annotation to watch it. Don't forget to subscribe to Gary. He's been in this as long as I have been, and I definitely trust all his news that he's been reporting. It's sourced, it's documented, and he also has a bunch of great videos from the field that you won't see anywhere else. Well, so check out Gary's channel. We're going to continue the conversation there.